Well, this is Return to the 4 Minute Friday. I've been asked about this for the last few weeks. A lot of subscribers will already be familiar with this format. It's every Friday, it's four minutes, and it's just four minutes to go through some of the questions that some of the subscribers have been asking over the past few weeks. Wide range of topics can be anything. Thank you for so many questions coming in, and it's really nice to hear that you wanted this format back on a Friday night. It's the end of the week, you're probably all heading out to spend time with friends and family on a fr Friday night, which I fully, fully approve of, <laughs> and I'll be doing the same. So this is just a little bit of a taster to finish off the working week, to celebrate the arrival of the weekend. So thank you so much for so many questions coming in. I'm not gonna waste any more time, because I'm sure you're all off out, going out to play. So we're gonna get four minutes on the clock, four minutes. Hi Jamie, do you always sink the braid when you're fishing? I like the braid underneath the water, same with the line as well, but I know I've got a very good friend of mine who gets loads of results and he doesn't mind the braid being on the surface, you know, he still sees bites that way, as long as it's not interfered, getting interfered with by the wind and, and the tow and any sort of, you know, debris like weeds or stuff or whatever might be on the surface, he's quite happy to do that and if I've got the choice, I prefer it underneath the water. Can you give us a rough idea of what it costs to compete in Ireland. Um, not here right now, no, I have done a, a video on that. Um, I'll put the link there for you. It's just the cost of fishing in Ireland, uh, you know, just rough ballpark figures about how much it costs to get there for your bait to compete and how much you could potentially win as well. So, so just follow that link. Have you got any more festivals lined up this year? I've got the Bow Beach Festival in August and then the next one is really going to be the World Pairs in September, just obviously for one week. And I think that might be it for this year, although I have already booked on the Larford Feeder Championship, which is later on in the year, and I'm just going to try to get clearance from work to go and fish that. Hi Jamie, if you go back to the Iberian Masters next year, would you fly again? Yes, I think I will. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, the Iberian Masters 14. I know a lot of you, if you haven't seen the video for that, the link's there for you. Yes, I probably will fly. The other alternative is to drive down, obviously through France, and then into Spain that way, or to get the ferry from southern England over to Santander and then drive from there. I just honestly think, now I've got the kit to fly, I will fly again. Do you ever freeze casters? No, I've never done it. I've heard that it doesn't really work. I've heard of lads doing it, and as soon as they've opened them, the following you know session, when they thought out, they float and everything. I just don't see the point in taking the chance, so no, I've never done it. Do you ever pleasure fish? Um, I don't really pleasure fish as such. I always go out on a session that's got a specific target or aim. So when I'm not in matches, I love to be on the bank because I think that's just, well, if you're on the bank, it's going to give you more experience, even if it's just of that venue or that method that you're fishing. And I'm always there doing something. So I might be trying a new rod out or reel or rig or trying to catch a certain target or target fish or species and just try to get better at that. But obviously, wherever I possibly can, I incorporate it with a day when dad can come along so I can just spend a few hours with him as well. Just killing two birds with one stone. Is your dad the cameraman on all your movies? No, he's not. A lot of people think he is the cameraman on a lot of the live match stuff that I've done. He's not, no. And you know, it's all done with remote controls and, and uh, GoPro that's mounted on a, a tripod or something like that. So no, he's not. What kind of rigs do you prefer most of the time? I'm not going to talk about rigs, I've talked about them loads of times. I did a video this week that covers 10 different sorts of feeder rigs. I'll put the link there for you. And that just goes through 10 rigs that I don't use everywhere, but they are rigs that I've used over the years. And you know, I will do another video on that because a lot of people give me feedback on that video. Whilst they like and love the, the video showing the rigs, they'd like a little bit of an explanation why each rig's good as well. So I'll do a, a more in-depth video on that as soon as I get a chance. Do you always find that mud feet on your box and platform are important? Yes, why not? I mean, if it's a hard solid bottom, you know, or a hard solid surface that you've got your box mounted on or, or, um, or a platform, it doesn't matter, does it? Because the, the mud feet are there, it's not making any difference. But obviously there are occasions, especially if you're on there for long periods, sometimes the bottom can be really, really soft and muddy. And throughout the course of a session, four minutes go so quick, doesn't it? Um, yes, it's important to have mud feet on, on, on everything because you, you sometimes you never know and it can be it can be a safety issue as well if you haven't got decent mud feet. I'm going to do one more question just purely because I've got so many to get through and obviously this is going to roll over to next week and the week after if the questions keep coming in. So the next one was 
when you've had a bad session, do you ever feel like just throwing all your tattle away? Yeah, I do. <laughs> of course I do. Um, whenever possible, I like to pack my kit away in some sort of a condition that it's almost ready to go again. So I like packing your rods away and putting feeders back in the right boxes and all that sort of thing. I do that, not because I've got OCD or anything like that. It's because it's just one less job to do before my next session. And let's face it, a lot of the time when you're on a match, you've usually got a bit of time to kill before the weigh-in, you know. Quite often, you know, even if you pack up really, really quickly, you've still got to sit there anyway, waiting for the scales to come. So I like to use that time to just kind of pack stuff away because then it means that the following week, come the Thursday night, Friday night or whatever, everything's pretty much how it should be and it's just one less job to do at home and it's just good practice. And, you know, yes, I've felt like throwing my kit in the water loads of times, but um, I learned off a, um, a former world champion who once told me that yes, he still to this day beats himself up after matches when he's had a bad match, but he just doesn't do it on the bank. He waits while he gets home and then does it. We're, we're all human and we do do it, and yeah, I feel like throwing my kit in sometimes, but I try to just kind of keep calm or sometimes I just go quiet. I don't get home and that's when I might spit the dummy out a bit, but you've just got to regroup and get ready. You've got to roll with it and get, you know, the next match is a fresh match. It's a fresh start. That's the great thing about fishing. And yeah, I mean, I'm only human, especially when you're so passionate about something, especially winning. You know, when you when things don't go to plan, it, it's going to happen. But that's a reflection of your character, I think, and it just shows how badly you did actually want to, to win and do well in the first place. Well, that's it. Four minutes have gone really, really quick again. Thanks for all the questions. Please keep them coming in. Don't think this channel's all about this tackle room. I'm out tomorrow. I've got full day filming tomorrow. I've got two or three different projects to work on whilst I'm there tomorrow. So next week there's going to be some um, footage from the bank just running through one or two different methods and just kind of sessions fishing just targeting certain fish and seeing if i can catch them if i can't try something else just nice live unplanned unscheduled stuff stuff where you just go i say i'm going to fish here let's see what we can catch you know stuff that hopefully you're going to be interested in and obviously it's going to be a bit of a change from this tackle room so have a fantastic weekend it's been a, a long long week and hopefully you're going to be out on the bank hopefully the weather's going to hold it looks like it's going to be all right sunday is a feeder masters qualifier good luck to everybody competing in that will freeman has had my ticket for that match so he's going to be on a flyer obviously if it's my ticket so good luck to him but good luck to everybody who's fishing that hopefully you'll get one of the three places in the final at bow beach so good luck have a fantastic weekend thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in a couple of days